this uh, Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District meeting to order on October 28, 2021 at 9.03 a.m. If the clerk could please call the roll to establish a quorum. Um, board member Aquino. Here. Uh, board member Daniels. Board member Desmond. Board member Frost. Here. See you this morning. I hope you saw. Board member um, Gira. Here. Board member Harris. Board member Kennedy. Here. Board member Loloi. Board member Natoli. Board member Papanel. Here. Board member Cerna. Board member Sing Allen. Here. Board member Terry. Here. Board member Vang. Present. Great, thank you. Um, all right, I'll, I'll, we'll stand and uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance and then uh, we'll go to the quick announcement. Mm -hmm. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, under, under God, indivisible, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. If the clerk could please read the uh, uh, clerk announcement. Okay. Um, in compliance with directives of the state and centers for disease control and prevention, the physical location of this meeting is closed to the public, consistent with state and local officials' recommendation to promote social distancing and Assembly Bill 361. Members of the public are encouraged to participate in the meeting by observing the meeting in real time at www.sacmetrocable.tv, Zoom video conference, conference line, and by submitting written comments electronically by email at boardclerk at airquality.org. Comments submitted in person will be delivered to the board of directors by staff. Public comments regarding matters under the jurisdiction of the board of directors will be acknowledged by the chairperson and accepted until the adjournment of the meeting, distributed to the board of directors and included in the recording. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District is cable cast live without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable system. This meeting is, be is being closed captioned and will be webcast at www sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will be repeated on Sunday, October 31st, 2021 at 9 a.m. on channel 14. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. All right, um, Madam Clerk, our next item. Um, our first item is the Air Pollution Control Officer's Report. There has been an update to the presentation that was included in the packet agenda. And our presenter, the presenter is Dr. Alberto Ayala. Good morning, morning Dr. Ayala. Good morning, good morning, uh, Chair. Uh, good to see you all. If you can, um, the clerk can please uh, load up the slides. Um, Yeah, if you can put it on the slideshow, there you go. Just, just um, go ahead and go to the next slide, uh, Virginia, please. Uh, good morning, board. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. Um, it's, it's hard to believe, but here we are, the last meeting of this board for uh, 2021. So as a reminder, uh, given the holidays, uh, we are not going to see you uh, until the beginning of next year. So um, we do have a few uh, 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 announcements that we want to share with you. Uh, I had to update the presentation as recently as yesterday because some of the announcements that I'm going to share with you uh, literally are late breaking. But the first thing I want to uh, tee up for you is um, this very important legislative report 
that we, the Sacramento um, Metro Air District is, is uh, expected to submit to the legislature, the state legislature, uh, in response to AB 661, which um, um, I can hear you, Virginia, if you don't mind muting. Um, uh, Assembly member Kevin McCarty, author in 2019, uh, dictating that we in the Sacramento region develop an emergency plan and a coordination plan in response to wildfires. Um, now, this is not what I'm about to say is not something new, that we want to do um, often, but unfortunately, it is the reality of the fact that we don't have the necessary resources to do this plan. The plan is due to the legislature at the beginning of next year, January 2022. Uh, we're not going to make it. Uh, the, the plan has to be first, has to be approved by you, the board, uh, and then we have to go submit it to the legislature. So we're, we're planning to do that uh, early next year, uh, and then we'll follow the process. Obviously, we're, we're keeping the legislature and, and some of the member McCarty uh, informed. Uh, but, but again, I, I just want you to be aware of uh, the fact that we're not going to make, make the deadline. The good news, though, is uh, we're, we're making a lot of inroads, working very closely uh, and, and, and very uh, collaboratively with uh, Sacramento County Public Health, uh, with um, our school districts. The superintendents have been uh, great to work with. Uh, so we're, we're definitely uh, feeling uh, pretty good about what we are going to present. And I, I want to acknowledge Ms. Roberts, uh, Amy Roberts, the, the head of our station resources division that has been leading the charge on our end uh, to put this together, working again with our partners. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the next uh, item is... Uh, uh, a program that we are just kicking off with our friends uh, at SMUD and a number of other uh, stakeholders in the region. And um, this is um, a good news. It, we're starting small, but uh, we are identifying some district resources that we want to dedicate to the um, area of electrifying uh, lawn and garden equipment. Uh, you may have heard in the news that the state is, is, is moving ahead. There was some legislative action uh, related to uh, getting rid of combustion emissions for these, for these uh, types of equipment. Um, and air districts in general have gotten a jump start in this area. And we ourselves are thankful to have the opportunity to work with our friends at SMOD uh, and some of the stakeholders in the region to kick off this, uh, this program. Like I said, we're starting small. I think we're dedicating at the moment about $80,000 to try to get to about 500 of these pieces of equipment uh, through an existing SMART program. Uh, and the idea is that we work out the, the process, we work out the kinks, and, and hopefully we can, we can do more uh, all the way up to leading to when the state requirement for electrification kicks in. So um, stay tuned. Any information we get, any any announcements that we would like you to help us publicize, we'll be sending your way. Uh, but I wanted to, I wanted you to be aware of this, um, this uh, important uh, new program that we're just rolling out. Next slide, please. So since we're not gonna see you until uh, next, uh, early next year, uh, we definitely want to, to follow up on our uh, commitment to keep you up to date in terms of where we are with teleworking. Um, there's two aspects to this, uh, where we are internally as an employer, as an agency uh, that has uh, most of our staff uh, teleworking. And then, of course, uh, externally, uh, as, you, as, as you're well aware, because you guys are all a part of this conversation, there's, there's broad interest in trying to figure out uh, what, what is the long game for uh, teleworking. So uh, internally, uh, you may recall that uh, starting in July 15, uh, we open up the offices to staff to come into, in, into the premises on a volunteer basis uh, up to a, you know, one day uh, a week. Uh, there's about 10% of us that are regularly uh, in the office because of various duties. Uh, we've got staff in the field, as you know. And there's about another 5% that is, that is becoming um, more of a typical foot traffic uh, coming back into the office. Um, we had intended to um, uh, switch to a require one day in the office, um, uh, one day a week in the office 
but we delay that all the way out to next year, uh, simply because as we are all reading, um, the, the pandemic is still um, flaring up. Uh, things are looking, looking good, looking up. The good news is again, we've been able to maintain uh, uh, you know, continuity of operations uh, through uh, the teleworking uh, scenario that, that we've been implementing. So uh, no problems uh, from, from that perspective. Now, externally, obviously there's a lot of interest uh, with our sister agencies, uh, SACOG and, and SMUD and, and Sacramento RT and, and many of you in your capacities uh, locally to try to understand you know, what's, what makes sense uh, long-term. And clearly from an air quality and uh, carbon reduction standpoint, um, you know, the significant uh, reduction in driving uh, up to 70% uh, in April of 2020 uh, led directly to an improvement uh, in terms of air quality, uh, a, a reduction of pollution on the order of maybe 10 to 30%, so very significant. So the challenge for us is, you know, how do we balance these, these air quality and climate benefits uh, with clearly the, the economic necessity to try to get back into some sort of, uh, you know, more, more activity, particularly in the core areas. Um, I don't know where we're going to land, but again, I, I want to um, uh, let you know that we are very much engaged in that conversation. And the idea is, uh, once we finish our analysis of the air quality and the VMT uh, benefits, uh, we're going to communicate those findings to the legislature and the governor. So uh, stay tuned. Clearly, we're going to keep you in the loop uh, in those communications. Next slide, please. Um, the next thing is, again, something that uh, I'm sure you've already started to hear in the news, and that is there's a very important um, global climate change uh, summit happening uh, about, to ha about to start this weekend in, in Scotland. Uh, clearly, uh, this is important for us because, uh, as you know, the nexus between conventional air pollution and climate pollution is very strong. Uh, there's interest uh, for us as an air agency to track this. Uh, we are tracking through our membership in the National Association of Cleaner Agencies. Uh, we're obviously talking to our partners at various states and, and local levels. There's, there's a couple of air agencies, uh, air districts in California, they're actually be participating. So we're gonna be tracking this uh, very important uh, convening uh, of all the uh, participants, the members of the Kyoto Protocol, protocol that is uh, happening in Scotland. And uh, as, as you are reading in the news, this is billed as, as the last chance for the world to, to get on the same page in terms of how we're gonna tackle climate change, which is, is all too evident uh, these days in, in all parts of, of the globe. So just, just wanted to share with you that this is something that is important to us. And um, next time we meet, we'll bring you back uh, the highlights from the meeting. Uh, next uh, slide, please. The next thing is again, just to make you aware that uh, one of our very important emission reduction programs, uh, Check Before You Burn is about to start uh, November 1st. Uh, tomorrow, our communications office is going to send you a package of information that you can that you can use to share with your constituents uh, in your capacity as a, as a local elected official. Um, again, particle pollution is something that we deal with and suffer from um, every winter as people uh, go indoors and begin to use fireplaces and that sort of thing. And uh, um, you know, this is this is again something that that we must do in order to stay on track to comply with the uh, ambient air quality standards for, for particles. So uh, again, just to remind you, please help us get the word out. Uh, the program has been in, in, in effect for, for many years, so hopefully we don't need to publicize it too much. Uh, but like I said, uh, tomorrow you're gonna see from our clerk uh, some information that you can use to, to help us get the word out that the program is about to kick off. Uh, next slide. And then the last thing, um, again, I, I was mentioning that this is late breaking. Uh, literally just yesterday, we got notice from uh, EPA that uh, the Sacramento region is now designated in serious non-attainment of the 2015 National Ambient uh, Air Quality Standard for ozone. Uh, this is something that uh, we are working on and the actual air quality plan to get to attainment uh, is something that you will see and you need to approve and we're bringing you that next summer. Um, the, the clock is ticking and the date that I need you to remember is summer 2027. 
that is when the region needs to get to attainment of this particular standard that was promulgated in 2015. So again, um, I just want you to be aware of this. Um, you know, we're not alone in that. We're not the only area in, in California and the country for sure in non-attainment. But at the same time, uh, there's there's high expectations that we're going to have to really step it up and and develop a robust plan that actually has us uh, reaching attainment um, by summer 2027, which is the deadline. So with that, um, I will conclude my APCO report. I thank you for your attention, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Ayala. Uh, let me um, uh, turn it over to the clerk. Clerk, do we have any comments from the public on this item? We do not. Okay, great. Let me bring it back to the board for any questions or comments for our air pollution control officer. Uh, uh, board member Laloi. Good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Ariel, a quick question. On the, the 2015 ozone um, concerns, um, is the air quality of Sacramento, is it due to the fires or its, its own... Um, it's the concerns that are existing within our city. Sorry about that. Um, clearly the fires contribute, but, but, uh, but no, most of the um, ozone is created by precursor emissions that come from mostly burning fossil fuels. So again, I go back to uh, transportation uh, and equipment and industrial uses. So anything that uses any type of fossil fuel uh, that is burned in an engine is is going to be the the primary contributor. And do you think that you know being so close to some of the main freeways, obviously Highway Five, that really brings the trucks and they kind of drive through our city? Is that you know one of the main um, uh, issues from, from that. Well, you, you, you bet, you bet. No, absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the key policy areas that, that we are getting pretty active and vocal about is the fact that you've got these very busy freeways, right, running north and south and east and west. Um, and most of that truck traffic is, is, is just passing by. So, you know, we get burdened with, with the pollution that comes uh, from these sources. So, um, it's, it's a strategy that really requires all of the above. And basically, again, as an example, that's why we want to electrify lawn and garden equipment because um, you know the low hanging fruit is gone. There aren't any big sources that we can go after and then you know put us on the path to meet the standards. It's a bunch of smaller sources that together when you add them all up, uh, contribute to the pollution that we're trying to handle. So um, again, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Lalowe. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, then uh, Madam Clerk, we'll go on to the next item here. Um, it is the consent calendar with four items. Item one is the September 23rd, 2021 Board of Director meeting minutes. Item two is agreements with Elk Grove and Twin River Unified School Districts for school transportation. Item three is the quarterly contract report from July 2021 through September 2021. And the fourth item is the contract with Hanson and Bridges LLP for hearing board council. Very good. Um, Madam Clerk, any members uh, from the public signed up to speak on this item? Not at this time, no. Okay, let me bring the consent calendar back to the, uh, back to the board here. Any questions from the board? Seeing that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll move adoption of the consent calendar, Aquino. Thank you. Second, Terry. Second, Sing Allen. Oh, it's been seconded by, uh, been, been moved by board member Aquino, seconded by board member Sing Allen. Uh, and Madam Clerk, uh, if you could call the roll. Member Aquino. Aye. Board member Daniels. Board Member Desmond. Board Member Frost. Aye. Board Member Gira. Aye. Board Member Harris. Board Member Kennedy. Aye. Board Member Loloe. Aye. Board Member Natoli. Board Member Papanau. 
Aye. Board Member Serna. Board Member Singh Allen. Aye. Board Member Terry. Aye. Board Member Vang. Yes. Great. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That measure passes. Uh, Madam Clerk, we'll go on to the next item. Um, we're on the discussion um, calendar, item five, Assembly Bill 361 Compliance, and it is presented by Jamil Mullins. Good morning, Chair Guerra and directors. Um, my name is Jamil Moons. I'm the Administrative Services Division Manager for the district. Um, uh, this morning, I'm going to be speaking to Assembly Bill 361, which I believe most of you are pretty familiar with from your other capacities on other boards and, and councils. So my presentation will be fairly brief. But we do want to um, let you know from, uh, um, I'm sorry, Virginia, can please go ahead and go to the next slide? Thank you. So uh, Assembly Bill 361 provides a mechanism for us to continue to meet virtually with certain with exemptions to certain Brown Act requirements um, under specific circumstances. So we are just to bring to you that those circumstances do exist and then to ask the board to pass a resolution um, finding those circumstances. So the public health, the Sacramento Public Health Officer did uh, submit a a letter back in September recommending to hold virtual meetings to continue to minimize and remove uh, additional risk for the safety and health of attendees. So that, that was presented. And so this board must make a finding that, um, that those circumstances do exist. And then according to AB 361, to vote once every 30 days to reauthorize uh, these exemptions, these Brown Act exemptions. Next slide, please. So um, we will ask you to adopt a resolution that's in your packet, finding that local officials have uh, recommended measures to promote social distancing and other compliance with uh, AB 361. Did want to bring to your attention, however, as Dr. Ayala mentioned in his IPCO report, we will not be meeting with the um, full board again until January. So we are recommending, and we worked with our district council um, at looking at AB 361 and its intent and compliance, and we feel that it is in the spirit and intent of the law that if we bring this item back up again at the at the very first item in January um, and pass this item uh, again with the findings, because the the law requires us to make those findings, consider the circumstances at that time, uh, which is why the recurring 30 days. Uh, that we can go ahead and do that at the beginning of January and not have to meet again in December and November, December and January to to uh, keep that resolution active. Um, so we are recommending that we do take this item up again as the first item in January as well. So with that, um, we are asking that the board uh, pass that resolution and then have us take it up. So I would be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. No, thank you very much, uh, Jamil. Madam Clerk, do we have any questions from the public? Any comments from the public? No. Okay, great. Thank you. Then I'll entertain a motion here. This will save us a meeting in December and November, um, just for the sake of uh, a protocol. Uh, and then it'll allow us to meet back in January. So I'll ask a motion from the members of the board. So moved. Been moved by board member Second, Kino, Terry. Has been seconded by board member Terry. Madam Clerk, if you could please call the roll. Member Aquino. Aye. Member Brett Daniels. Member Desmond. Member uh, Frost. Aye. Member Aguirre. Aye. Member Harris. Member Kennedy. Aye. Member Loloe. Aye. Member Natoli. Member Papanel. Aye. Member Serna. Member Singh Allen. Aye. Member Terry. Aye. Member Bang. Yes. Great, Madam Clerk, that sounds like that measure passes. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item, Madam Clerk. 
Um, it's item six, it's the notice of 2021 community air quality grant funding. It's presented by Mike Newenberg, and there has been an update to the presentation that was included in the agenda. Very good. All right. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Newenberg, and uh, good morning, Chair Gear, and to the directors here. Uh, let me just get the screen adjusted a little bit here. Uh, I'm a program supervisor with the Transportation and Climate Change Division, and I wanted to share some exciting news about our latest uh, funding round that we did for incentives. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? We, uh, we've had an uh, exciting uh, solicitation here. We had another uh, opportunity to have 18 million available to us uh, on this last round that we've done for funding. Uh, as you can see, uh, We've got about six different funds that were contributing to this 18 million that we had here. Uh, many of them have similar guidelines, but they actually have some nuances on them that our staff had to actually uh, take into consideration as we were considering how to actually run this uh, solicitation. Uh, the transportation funds that we have were uh, the community air protection funds. We have the Carl Moore protection funds, or Carl Moyer funds. Uh, we have uh, farmer funds, which is really the agricultural uh, funding measures that we have for ag farmers and it's specific towards that. And then we had the goods movement prop on B. Uh, those first four funds come from the state air resources board and we work in partnership with the ARB uh, on those particular funding streams there to meet their guidelines. Uh, next, we had our local uh, $2 uh, department motor vehicle fees uh, that comes in locally to our agency to support these projects. And then uh, the bottom one there is our Sacramento Emergency Clean Air Transportation, better known as our CCAP program, uh, which uh, is funding now uh, zero emission uh, advanced on-road trucks. And it's in, we work in partnership with SACOG on that particular funding stream. Uh, the reason why I mention all these different funds is because there are a lot of nuances that we have to pay attention to. Um, and they work in parallel uh, to fund three broad categories that we were doing on this solicitation, which is uh, primarily zero emission on-road trucks and buses. Uh, many of them happen to be zero emission school buses, as well as uh, uh, like delivery trucks and medium duty trucks. Uh, we had another focus uh, on off-road equipment. Uh, tends, it's primarily in the ag and construction business as well. Uh, and we actually had some zero emission opportunities there in the ag that I will share later on. And then uh, the third broad category was infrastructure support, uh, which is needed for many of these advanced technologies. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? So to go down this uh, solicitation, we had uh, to set up some project criteria uh, to make it fair for the community and for our participants abroad. Uh, the solicitation ran primarily in the month of April and May of this year. Uh, and prior to even starting the solicitation, uh, our district staff had to review the guidelines that were available to us and also review the community input that had been provided to us over many months uh, and even really over the last year or two uh, to make sure that we set up a solicitation that really represented well the community as well as trying to find good viable projects that reduce uh, air quality as well. So this was a community and district staff process to develop the criteria. Uh, we came up with five main points that we wanted to consider. Uh, so a best ranking application would receive five points. And for these five bullets here, each of these bullets was worth one point. Uh, first one was uh, if a project was located and operating in our AB 617 for and South Sacramento community. Uh, the next point would be available for those that were actually operating within a disadvantaged community uh, based on the Cal and Biro screen uh, format. Uh, the third bullet, it's an older criteria that we've had for almost two decades now. Uh, it's the AB 1390 designated community, and that's a Moyer related uh, requirement where at least 50% of our funds need to go into uh, ethnically diverse communities of greater than 50% or areas that have a uh, federal uh, poverty level greater than 10%. So we've had an EJ-like criteria in our incentive programs for nearly 20 years now, uh, even before any of the recent developments that have happened in the last few years from a community program. Uh, our fourth bullet was available for projects that had received like community support letters or uh, had interagency partnerships and collaborative efforts. And then we had a fifth point available for applications that were really ready to be funded and delivered. It was kind of a first come first serve process. So for applications we got earlier in the process, they were ranked higher than ones that maybe came towards the very last day uh, because it gave our staff a little more time to review those projects. 
Uh, finally, after all was said and done, the projects were reviewed by our staff and management, and we also uh, shared this community list with the community as well uh, prior to final selection. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Here we have a graphical representation of where the projects are actually located. Uh, I know the map might be hard to see, but on the left-hand side, we have a map uh, primarily of Sacramento County, and you'll see that the AB 617 zone is, is highlighted in there as well. Uh, you'll see that there's actually kind of a yellowish, orangish, uh, yellowish and pinkish type colors in there. And the dot sizes represent uh, the larger the dot, the larger the dollar value project. Uh, the pink zones are more are representing the uh, AB 617 zones that we've identified within Sacramento County and, of course, uh, the highlighted area South Sacramento. And you'll notice that many of the dots are highlighted uh, within uh, the disadvantaged communities in AB 617 zones. The uh, map on the right shows the regional collaborative efforts that we actually had with our funds. Uh, it's worth noting that the Moyer program, CCAP program, uh, the Community Air Protection program, and farmer funded. Uh, programs actually had funds that were also going to our regional uh, air districts as well. And hence, we have some graphical representation of some of the projects that were highlighted in those areas as well. Uh, so we were working actually with the Yolo Solano and, uh, and the Air Resources Board and SACOG. And we actually had some residual funds even from Feather River that we were implementing here on these programs as well. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. So with that in mind, we really had a, I think, just a tremendous uh, amount of applications that came in here. We received 158 applications uh, requesting $57 million in funding. Uh, clearly, we did not have enough money to fund all of these wonderful projects, but we still had 45 projects that we did fund uh, with the 18 million that we had available. Uh, there were many worthy candidates that came through on this. Uh, and the remaining projects, we still have put on a pending list. We have discovered from prior history that uh, while we, when we actually get to the point of an application coming to us, and when it comes to the award status, sometimes participants are maybe not able to come up with the capital, maybe they have a change in business plans, or maybe the project itself comes in a little bit lower value request than what was the initial request, and that might free up some uh, additional dollars. As those dollars become available, we will move down the pending list that we have developed uh, from those 158 applications, and we will just pick off the next one that was the next highest ranking in terms of funding those projects. Uh, for public transparency, we now have the projects listed on our website for those that have received awards. Uh, that way, everybody is aware of where these projects are actually going and what, and, uh, and uh, there's notifying the public of who actually uh, received these grant awards. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, some of the project highlights, uh, just to kind of cover here on this, uh, you'll see that uh, we actually have a recognition here of Southgate Recreation and Park District, where they're taking on some lawn and garden, zero emission lawn and garden equipment that will be operated within our local schools. Uh, they were actually getting a couple zero emission trucks from our CCAP program as well. And so here we have a, a, a public agency that's actually moving in the direction of going towards zero emission technology. Uh, it's worth noting that Twin Rivers and Oak Grove School District still continue to, they've already bought a number of zero emission school buses and they applied for additional ones through this solicitation and they are receiving awarded funds as uh, already been approved by the board. Uh, the Sacramento Public Library has a zero emission bookmobile that they're going to be going into the community with as well. Just this is a great demonstration of for, even with the, not only with the zero emission technology, but just educating our youth and our community about the benefits of zero emission technology. Plus, you're talking about uh, education as well, just from uh, book learning and computer labs. Uh, this is just a, a great project to highlight from that end as well. And not to be outdone, even in the off-road area, even in the ag community, we are starting to venture into zero emission equipment from that end. Uh, that picture you see is a utility electric vehicle. Uh, it's using batteries as well. And it allows uh, the ag community to be able to haul, uh, whether it's uh, agricultural type products or tools or other things to get about on their land. And it's a zero emission equipment as well. So you can see where the technology is moving. Uh, there are vast opportunities available. And we just wanted to kind of give you a visual demonstration of where these projects are going. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. We're not done yet. You know, even though we just finished up this last solicitation, we have additional funds coming into our agency that we still need to implement. So even though we're trying to catch our breath and trying to get all these projects out the door that we just awarded, we have another 20 million that's coming in this next spring. And I think it's worth highlighting that 
this money is not going away. We are going to continue to promote this technology. We have a big uh, Carl Moyer bump this year. Normally we receive about 4 million a year. This time it's going to be 12 million. Uh, and then along with that, we still have about 8 million in other transportation funds that we anticipate getting uh, from community air protection funds, from a farmer program, and even from our local $2 DMV again. And I think it's worth noting that this may not be all the funding that's coming into us next spring. These are the ones we've confirmed, but there may be additional funds that are becoming available. Um, and I think it's worth noting on these last two bullets of the actual need. While it's great to receive all this money and get all the technology out and really benefit the community, uh, our local agency still needs match dollars in order to be able to continue receiving funds from both the federal and the state and federal level. Uh, both of those uh, entities uh, really expect local government to come in with match dollars to stretch their dollars out even further. And so it's important to recognize that uh, there are requirements there uh, that need to be met. So there's a, a need from a local government standpoint to be able to do that. Uh, and of course, there's going to be staff resources needed to continue investing these resources. And it's beyond just staff resources. It still requires uh, partnerships with our local vendors. Uh, they do the outreach for us in order to find participants. Uh, we need to work with our community-based organizations in order to find people who are willing to participate in the program. Uh, and of course, even local government agency. These are where collaborative efforts come into play. And all of these resources are needed to be continuing these uh, fine investments within our region. And on that note, I think uh, that concludes my presentation. Great, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Madam Clerk, I think we've got someone uh, uh, from public comment on this item. We have two public comments. Um, the first one is a written and uh, written testimony from Bill Knowlton from the Macro Partnership that I will read in a second. And then the second is a public comment from Vince King with Southgate Parks and Recreation District. So the first public comment is from Bill Knowlton and it reads, Dear Chair Guerra and Sacramento Metro Air District Board of Directors, I am writing to express my commitment to supporting the process and outcomes of your staff's recent community air grants and set of solicitations. As executive director of the Mac Road Partnership and representative of the South Sacramento Florin AB 617 Steering Committee, I understand the importance of connecting and involving the community when critical decisions are being made that directly impact the health and safety and quality of life of the community at risk. Air quality and how we redress issues of poor air quality matters. Our geographic location within the city of Sacramento is a major residential com commuting and business thoroughfare responsible for continuous high density highway and surface street traffic. Unfortunately, this residential and business community is disproportionately burdened with high emissions and the impacts of exposure to those emissions. As such, I appreciate opportunities to implement emission reducing strategies when possible. Having the benefit of being directly involved with your staff and participating in the process, I understand the limitations imposed on the Air District regarding the incentive funds available. However, despite these limitations, the proposed project list represents earnest steps towards emission reductions in our community and the region. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. And then the next um, is a public comment from Vance King with Southgate Parks and Recreation. Mr. King. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Chair Guerra, Vice Chair Kennedy and members of the board. Uh, my name is Vincent King. I work, I'm an associate park planner for the Southgate Recreation Park District. Southgate is an independent special district. We serve the park and recreation needs of 136,000 residents in the unincorporated area of South Sacramento County. It's a highly diverse area, both in terms of economics and population, as well as land uses. Uh, to the east, we have many open space and agricultural lands centrally located to our district are the new growth areas in Sacramento County and the vineyard area. And then on the western portion of the district are the neighborhoods and communities that border Highway 99 that you can see behind me. 
uh, that stretches from Calvine Road to 14th Avenue. And that's why we're here. Um, much of that AB 617 uh, Florence South Sacramento community occurs with the Southgate Recreation Park District. We have 23 parks, two, three community centers, two trail parkways, landscape corridors, and uh, a number of school partnerships where we own and maintain 200 acres of land in the AB 617 area. And that's ex why we're so excited for this opportunity. Um, not only will this uh, potential project improve parks and facility for the public vital electric vehicle infrastructure that is very lacking uh, in, in the South Sacramento area. And it'll be a significant investment in reducing noise and air pollution. Uh, we believe these will have great benefits to our park neighbors, uh, the broader community, and our staff who are out there on a day-to-day uh, basis using this equipment and maintaining the parks for the public to enjoy. Uh, further, we see this as a significant investment to ideally reduce uh, long-term operational costs so that that money saved can then be put back into the community in the form of improved parks and maintenance. Uh, Southgate's a small uh, jurisdiction. We're not part of a larger city or county, so these opportunities and grant funds are essential to help our organization take the leap to a new technology that we we know is coming down the road. So I just want to thank staff, um, the community that supported our proposal. Uh, your staff were excellent to work with. Uh, particularly, just want to name uh, Christian Damcure, whose knowledge of the grant programs uh, was really essential for helping us navigate uh, the proposal and solicitation. And we look forward to bringing this uh, project to fruition over the months and years to come and continued partnerships on this and other part, part, uh, projects. So uh, thank you for your time and look forward to answering any questions if there are any. Great, thank you, Vincent. Appreciate your comments there. Um, let me go to questions of the board here. Madam Clerk, is that all the public comment? Yes. Great, thank you very much. Let me go back, bring this back to the board here. This is a receive and file. Questions from the board? Nope, I don't see any hands raised. I just wanted to say thank you to the staff. Uh, as uh, Director Ayala mentioned, we have a significant target to meet in order to uh, uh, reach our ozone requirement and attainment it's by the federal government. So all of these are very proactive steps in every aspect of our region from agricultural and rural all the way to urban and suburban. So I wanna thank the staff for all that great work. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, no questions from the board here. Let's move on to our next item. That concludes our meeting. Are there any public comments from the public on items not uh, on items not on the agenda? No. Seeing none. Board ideas, comments, and AB one two three four reports. Does any board member have anything to talk about? Very good. Well, thank you, everyone. Here, Gary, can I just make a comment? Oh, yes, yes, sorry, hold on here. Uh, yes, as a board member Aquino there. Thank Go ahead. you. Uh, I just wanted to say, you may have seen um, on the news recently that PG&E is planning to come to the city of Folsom starting next week to remove 192 trees, including 76 native oaks. And um, of course we share their uh, desire for safety and reliability of their power lines, but we also are very protective of those native oak trees. So we uh, continue to engage them. Uh, we are trying to get some clarity at this point. Uh, there are trees, oak trees particularly, that are tagged out in the field that do not show up on their list for removal that they submitted to the city. Um, we also think there are some non-native trees that do pose a hazard to their lines that are not tagged for removal. So uh, we just continue to communicate with them to try to um, figure out how we can uh, maintain the safety of those lines, but also try to preserve as many of our uh, native oaks as possible. So if any other jurisdiction has successfully uh, done this with PG&E, feel free to reach out. I appreciate that board member Aquino. Um, I know our, our city arborists uh, have worked with them uh, diligently, particularly in the Elmhurst community. So I'll, I'll ask as well uh, if our uh, Kevin Hockner from our city maybe communicate with your city to, to figure out you know, how they can work together. Yeah, it is, a, the, the Valley Oaks are, are uh, wonderful trees that are 
capture carbon significantly. So uh, making sure that we can uh, manage safety and then improve, uh, manage the carbon capture, I think is, is an important one as well. Thank you, uh, Board Member Aquino. Any other questions? Okay, seeing no more comments or ideas from the board, then uh, Madam Clerk, we're adjourned at uh, 9.48 a.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.